Hello and welcome to Trend Maker or TR3 ND Maker. My name is Alex and today's project is that we are going to cut a glass bed for this Ender 3 Pro and that's coming up right now. Before we get started cutting the glass bed for this 3D printer, I wanted to make a quick little um, disclaimer that I am doing this for demonstration purposes only. I am demonstrating the procedures and the protocols that I go through when I am cutting a piece of glass from my 3D printer. If you attempt to do this on your own, that you are doing it on your own risk and I'm accepting no liability. And we're gonna go quick measurement front to back. 235, 235 exactly as it should be. 235 millimeters by 235 millimeters. All right, so I'm gonna move this out. We're gonna get our glass pane out here. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer our measurement onto our pane of glass right here. Okay, so accurate ruler, and we're gonna go just a hair more than the actual measurement. So in this case, it's 235. We're gonna go maybe 235 and a half, and we're gonna run that line down there. And what we're trying to do is basically when we cut this, we wanna be breaking just a hair over that dimension that we're looking for because as we sand these edges, we want everything to sit up nice and flush. Okay, so 235, we'll get it nice and squared here. Just gonna put a couple dots here. All right. Perfect, we're all set. All right, now I'm gonna move things around and we're gonna go ahead and actually go through the cutting procedure. Before we make our first cut, let's first clean the glass with a little bit of soap and water and a razor blade. Just scrape off any gook that could be on the glass that could potentially affect the tool as we're gliding it across to get our first cut. Okay, it's really important. Now this has already been prepped. Now looking at the glass here, we have two sections. We have this sort of big section here and we have the skinny section here. The more structure you have on the side you're breaking off of the glass, the easier it is to cut or to break because there's more structure to it. When we get to this piece, trying to break and get the leverage on this little piece is actually gonna create um, potentially a hook or a bow in this piece of glass. Now I do have a little technique I'm gonna show you that will actually greatly improve our chances of this. But actually having that little bit bigger piece of glass going to like a 12 by 14 or something like that, 11 by 14, even a little couple more inches can make a big difference in making these breaks. And the cost is only 20, 30, 40 cents more for that bigger piece of glass. So if you're doing this for the first time, I would definitely recommend maybe going to that next size up and, and get a backup. Uh, the worst case scenario, you're gonna have an, an extra replacement bed um, for later. Okay, now we're gonna score this piece right here and that'll effectively shorten the distance and make this break a little easier. So we're gonna take our ruler, and align that up. Now, you do not want to just try to hold this and run the tool. You're going to be putting a lot of pressure with your cutting tool and you're going to end up make, moving, making this move. So we want to tape it down and that will ensure that we're going to get a nice, uh, even um, mark that's not going to move. Alright, so we're going to add a little tape on here. Get it lined up. Nice and straight. Alright. And we're going to get that nice and secure so it doesn't move. All right. Now, the cutting tool here has a wheel here. We want to dip this in a little bit of oil, just a tiny drop of oil. We want this to roll nice and smoothly. We're going to put uh, even pressure on it. We're going to start at one end and we're going to roll it across, being putting pressure against the ruler so we get a nice straight line. You want to try to do this in one pass, one smooth, even pressure motion. The temptation will always be to go over it a second or third time. What this can actually do is it actually can break up the glass in several pieces and when you do snap it, you're gonna get a much more jagged edge. It's better to go in one smooth, even motion, all right, which we are going to do now. Let me put my safety glasses on and I'll just put one glove on. I don't need it, but I'll just do it from this side, nice and firm on the glass. All right, I'm gonna give this just a little nick right here on the corner and one nice, smooth, even motion across the glass Okay, that felt really good. 
Now, it doesn't even look like it's done much, but actually it has. Okay, so we've got that. Now, we're going to move this out of the way, and we're going to slide this to the edge. On the cutting tool, there's a little ball end. What you do here is we get this hanging off the edge, and we're going to lightly tap the glass, the part that we're going to break off. And if you watch inside the crack here, you're going to see it actually starting to flake out a little piece of glass. That's great. What it's doing is it's actually making the crack, the little imperfection, just sort of like start getting a little more jagged, a little deeper. Just a few taps. Okay. Looking good. All right. Now, you want to set the line right on the edge. And we want to do this in one nice, even motion. Just a simple pop down. Get nice and straight on the edge. One, two, three. And look at that. We have a perfectly straight cut. That came out great. Look at that. Okay. Now, the tricky part. All right. Now we're going to take our ruler again. We're going to line it up. Get it nice and straight. Get this nice and secure, get it nicely taped down. Okay. Up here. All right, again, one smooth motion. We're going to start with just a little bit of on the hair and the edge. Okay, that felt really good. All right, take a look at it. Yep, looks good. All right, now we're going to come off to the edge here. Again, Again we're going to do our quick little tapping motion here. And I can actually see, you can see where it's, it's crystallizing more as I'm breaking this. Actually, so it's fracturing more. And I see it's just a little lighter over here, so I'm just going to add a little bit more over on the side. See if I can improve that over here on the side. Perfect. Okay, now, for this, it would be almost impossible to just snap this. We'll get a really bad break on this. So what we can do to improve our chances here is we're actually going to bring in a piece of wood. We're not going to break it this way. We're actually going to turn the glass around this direction. Put the glove on here. All right, and we're going to put it on the edge this way. We want the structure here to help us do the break. And this will actually keep this nice. The wood will actually keep this nice and evenly supported, and that's what we need here. All right, so we're going to put our block of wood here, right on the line. Get it lined up nicely. Good, strong amount of pressure on here. And look at that, perfect cut. It's a really, really clean cut. Our glass is all cut, now it's time to get into the sanding of the edges phase so we don't cut ourselves in the future. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. The factory edges on here are, are not too bad, but ultimately you do have a risk of cutting yourself on these. So we're going to try to sand all four edges with a special emphasis on the two that we actually cut. So you can use regular sandpaper, folding it over a few times, um, like so, just fold it over a few times and run it across the edge with a little bit of water. That works out perfectly fine. However, I find that these sanding blocks that you buy, this is a 3M drywall sanding block. I find that this out works out really, really well. You have a less chance of cutting yourself. It's much easier. It's got a nice a coarseness to it that'll give a nice rounded over edge. It's a lot less effort with one of these. And again, safety wise, we're keeping a lot more distance uh, from our hands from the actual sharp edge. Okay, so how do we do this? First of all, we're gonna need our safety equipment. We're going to need a mask. We're going to be actually uh, sanding the glass, and those little tiny particles of glass will be in the air and potentially could get in your lungs. So it's really important that we wear a dust mask. And goggles as well. But again, the little flakes are going to be going up in the air, and uh, we want to protect ourselves. All right, and we're going to definitely want to wear some gloves here. Okay, and we're going to start with our, one of our rough edges. So these are the factory edges. This is the, one of the breaks we did. Actually, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, so we're going to dip our block in water. And you're just going to rub it across like this. Nice and straight. You'll feel as that smooths out. Keep the paper, the uh, block or the sandpaper lubricated. 
This will actually keep the dust down as well. Okay, we also, now I'm going straight to get the, the main cut, but we're also gonna go on the edges like this, and we wanna slightly round, round over the edge. You can sort of move around like this. Yeah, that's nice. All right, we're gonna turn it. Same thing, a little bit more water. Let's See how it feels. Slightly feel it with your finger. If you feel like a little sharp on an area, go ahead and go over that area. This actually feels quite good. Just a little bit on these two corners might be good. It's not going to cut me, but I'll just be a little safer. Yeah, that feels great. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna clean everything up and let's go ahead and put this on our Ender 3 and let's uh, do our first print on glass. All right, so we've got our glass bed on here. We've removed the flexible build plate and we've got the glass bed sitting on here. Now, how do we attach this? There's actually three ways to attach it. One is we can actually 3D print some little corner clips and that tends to work out relatively nicely. Although I do find that it can get a little bit of movement. Okay, the tried and true method had for years has been these sort of little um, clips that you get for a clipping large amounts of paper and they basically work nice and easy. You just put them on the front here like so and on the back and there. We'll hold it nice and secure. And I just usually leave the little uh, metal ends on. Now, if you want to put one on the side, you can do that as well, but you will have to remove the metal uh, ends. And you just basically pinch like so. And that, that just sort of pinches and it'll release and it's on there. Now, if you remove this, do not just slide them off. That would actually, the metal is sharp and it'll hit the edge and it'll actually uh, flake the edge of the glass. You actually want to, Use pressure, squeeze, and it'll just actually release. And again, for the, the side pieces, if you're going to do them, nice squeeze. All right, so that works well. And we want to avoid, on the, especially on the ender, putting any clips along the side because uh, when the uh, printer first starts, it always creates that little line right here, yeah, getting the extruder working, and it will create that line, and then you'll smash the clip. You don't want to do that. Uh, I think the uh, tornadoes do it along the front here. So again, you want to avoid clips here. So you just sort of position them where it's not doing its initial um, priming of the extruder. Okay, the other method that I really like now is I like using just painter's tape. So this is three quarter inch, I think, or one inch uh, painter's tape. Just a little piece of tape sticking over about a quarter inch on the top, on the front side there, like so. And then just create the line and then wrap under nice and secure. And I'll do that on three corners. Super fast, it's easily removable, and in no way we, will we damage the glass especially after all the work getting that glass on here. And this will actually, if the nozzle does sweep over this, it won't damage the nozzle at all. It's just tape. It'll just um, print on top of the tape.
All right, so we're all set. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a quick little... Uh, oh, very important. We want to um, go ahead and give these um, bed leveling knobs a little tighten up. Remember, this glass is going to be a little thicker than the flexible build sheet. So we want to lower it so we don't crash down. Let's do our auto home. And I've, I've tightened these up just a little bit. All right, now if you have ever had problems with getting that first layer down or you're struggling with that, printing on glass was the thing that really saved me. Um, I was able to get a much more consistent um, first layer going on glass. All right, so I'm disabled here. I'm gonna do a quick bed leveling. And I can already see how much more, how much flatter this um, build surface is than the original. Not that it was bad, but I did notice little imperfections, especially in the center where it dipped just a hair. Yep, we're good. All right, let's go ahead and print. And this will just be a um, a little cube. Let's get it started. Now it is important that you, with glass, you always want to keep this build surface nice and clean. So I usually use a razor blade to just get off any of the little plastic um, little nubs that go on there from the bed leveling process. And you also just soap and water usually will clean the glass really well. Um, it's going to work out great. And here's super great thing about printing on glass um, that it'll stick really well, especially if you get that first layer just right. It'll stick perfectly well. Um, you can use glue stick or, or uh, hairspray. That does work well to get a little bit more bite if you need to. But the, the great thing about printing directly to glass like this is when, the, when this actually cools down, when it's done, the print will just pop right off. And you're going to get a super glossy underside for your prints. I mean, especially with like a black or a nice color, it almost looks has a carbon fiber look to it. It looks just super, super nice, uh, especially if you iron on the other side so your top and bottoms will look super smooth. And I can see the first layer is just smashing down perfectly. Yeah, it's looking great. All right, there it is. A glass bed for your 3D printer. Now this is for the Ender, but this process will definitely work uh, for the Tornadoes. It'll work for the CR10s. Pretty much any 3D printer that you want to put glass. Same procedure, just a bigger sheet of glass. Uh, sand the edges. Be safe. Wear a mask when you're sanding. Wear eye protection so you don't get glass in your eyes. Uh, be super careful, wear gloves so you don't cut yourself. Um, really fun project. And the benefit is uh, these, I'll put a link in the description for the clips and the sanding blocks and stuff. Uh, but for this tool, once you buy this equipment, the cost for each of your glass beds from that point forward is like 3 to $4 for the sheet of glass. Uh, once you buy these, and these will last pretty much forever, especially in the 3D printing world. Um, yeah, so go ahead and do that. Uh, hey, this is a new channel for me. And this is, I think, like my third video. So if you like uh, what I'm doing here and um, you want me to do more, please like and subscribe. It's really going to help me out. It's going to keep me super motivated. If there's something, a topic that you want me to address or to do a video on, send a comment to me. I'd love to uh, try to do something, something, especially something that's a little different than other people are doing. I've been 3D printing for quite a while. I feel like I have a pretty good amount of knowledge and I have yet to have a problem stump me. Um, so I feel like, uh, and I've helped a lot of people with the, uh, problems with their 3D printers, either by video chats and things like that. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. Thanks again so much, and until the next video, I'm out.